Ladies and gentlemen, hello, it is nice to see you. Uh, I would like uh, to talk to, to you today, uh, urinary calculi, or uh, urolithesis. Urinary calculi or urinary stones are uh, stones which are formed in the kidney or the ureter or the bladder or the posterior urethra or the anterior urethra. This is concerning the site. Concerning uh, the etiology of stone formation, there is a familial tendency. Uh, that's why if any one of you, one of his uh, members of his family has a stone, uh, he should be careful, at least concerning uh, the water intake. Uh, so, the water intake, the hydration and dehydration is a very important factor. Uh, the familial factor or the genetic factor is another factor. Inflammation of the urinary tract is another factor. We found also that uh, there are what we call protectin collides. These uh, protectin collides are uh, very minute uh, molecules which are electrically charged and in a state of continuous bombardment. These collides, its function is to disperse the crystals in the urine, for example, phosphates, urates, uh, cysteine, oxalates, and so on. We found that these protectin collides are less in males than females. That's why stone formation <coughs> in males are three times than females. Also, we found that these protectin collides are higher in negros. That's why stone formation in white more, more than negros or blacks. Also, these protectin collides are more in pregnant women. That's why it is a rarity to find stone formation during pregnancy. These are the most important factors concerning the etiology. What, are, what about the types of stones? Stones may be oxalate stones, and usually in acid urine, urate stones or uric acid stones, also in acidic urine, as well as phosphate stones which are formed in infected alkaline urine. What about the management or the treatment of these stones? If the stone is less than uh, 10 millimeters, we have to try medical treatment. Medical treatment is to push water. You have to have water intake uh, at, at least the amount of water which makes you give three liters of urine per 24 hours. We can't tell you how much water you take because it differs from a person to another one. Uh, for example, if you are living in a conditioned atmosphere, uh, it differs than a worker in the street. So, push water as a medical treatment. Also, change the pH of urine. If it is acidic, you have to alkalinize urine. If it is uh, alkaline urine, you have to acidify the urine. And the best acidifier is vitamin C. If the stone is more than 10 millimeters, then we have a new modality of treatment, which is as well, or extracorporeal shock wave lystripsy, that is disintegration or powdering the stone into powder so as it can pass through the urinary tract. If the stone is big, more than three centimeter, the shock wave lithotripsy is not useful. So we have to resort to what we call the PCN, or percutaneous nephrolithotomy. That is, I introduce a, an operating cyst scope and 
integrate the stone with a laser beam or uh, ultrasound and then take the stone out. Sometimes neither the Aswell or shockwave lithotripsy nor the PCN or percutaneous nephrolithotomy is useful in some situations. So we have to resort to open surgery. And in open surgery, uh, we take out the stone and try to correct the etiology of the stone, the stone formation. A final word, what about fasting? Well, if you are a stone troubled patient, this, which means that you are a stone former, and every year you pass two, three, four, five, ten stones, so it is better not to fast. Because you need water, and fasting deprives you of water up to 16 hours, which is um, one of the most important factors for stone formation. But uh, if you are an occasional stone former, which means it is once in your life or twice in your life, then you can fast, presuming that you don't expose yourself to much l losses of water through skin or perspiration. How we diagnose uh, that there is a stone in the urinary tract? By the symptoms first. Usually the patient comes with severe colicky pains. And uh, as we usually describe it, it is from loin to groin. And uh, also the patient may complain of tea colored urine. And this is because presence of blood in urine, especially the blood which comes from the kidney, it is altered and becomes Coca-Cola-like or tea colored. Uh, <clears throat> we confer our suspicions concerning the stone by plain X-ray or by ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound probably is superior to plain X-ray uh, in that uh, the translucent stones, the stones which does not appear in the X-ray, it appears in the ultrasound. We resort to other modalities of diagnosis, for example, the intravenous pyelography, uh, in which we an, in, inject a dye through our veins, or the vein of the patient, and then we uh, radiograph the kidney. Other modalities also of diagnosis, but uh, usually these are sufficient. Uh, one word of warning, be careful uh, to, to misdiagnose the stone as an appendix. And uh, many patients have been opened as acute appendicitis, and uh, the appendix is removed in the operation, and after a few days, the pain recurs back again, and we do x-ray, and we find stone in the ureter. So the most important point in differential diagnosis is that stone ureter or stone right ureter and acute appendicitis. Thank you very much, and we will meet again.